Here's another example where a linear model breaks down. This table gives record times for the marathon for the men's race and the women's race over a period of about 15 years. If we plot this data, both groups look like they follow a linear trend. In other words, we can kind of draw a straight line that seems to approximate each data set. But what's the problem with this? Why can't we just use this linear model to predict forward and see what record times we expect to see in the future? To show this, let's actually build the linear model and then make predictions with it. If we use the initial and final values for each to make a linear model, the men's linear model looks like this. Notice that the growth rate D is negative because it's decreasing over time. The times are getting shorter. And the women's model looks like this. Notice the women's growth rate or decay rate is much more extreme than the men's. And we notice that on the graph as well. The line that predicts the women's marathon times is much steeper than the one for the men. What's wrong with these models though? They look perfectly fine so far. The problem is that these models predict that the women's record would beat the men's record by 1985. In 1985, the men's record was still 14 minutes faster than the women's. Not only that, it predicts that in 1997, the women would run the marathon in an hour and 20 minutes, or at about 20 miles per hour, which is close to the top speed of a world-class sprinter. Furthermore, it predicts that by 2017, they'd be running in 2.5 minutes, or around 630 miles per hour. Obviously, these linear models give ridiculous results if you go too far forward in time. So again, the lesson is clear that linear models can make predictions in the short term that aren't off by too much, but as we go further and further forward into the future, linear models tend to break down which is why we need more complicated models, like the ones in the rest of the chapter.